Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo and we're here at the Cambridge Los Angeles Showroom in West Hollywood. I'm here with Julian Buchan with his movie, Real Lemons. Let's take a look at the clip. Julian, congratulations uh, on your film, Real Lemons. Um, really fantastic. As a new filmmaker's uh, alumni as well, it's great to see you That's back. Right. Um, but for those that haven't the pleasure of seeing your film, tell us a brief synopsis. Um, so it's, it's basically about the sacrifices we make in pursuit of freedom, in mm -hmm. a nutshell, as mm -hmm. a very broad stroke. Um, but more specifically, it's about uh, Jesse, who's an open, openly gay ex-convict who kind of ropes his younger brother um, to into robbing a bar so they can get out of the small hometown that they're from. Yeah, I mean, it's it's brilliant. I mean, I was like, Julian, for a short film, it, it felt like it felt like a feature. You know, you kind of had this sort of feature element to it. But my goodness, all this, I mean, a lot of action. Like, how, where did this inspiration firstly for the story happen for this particular one? Um, I thought it would be interesting to make a gay Western, basically. See, there you go. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought about uh, what uh, genres that are very, very uh, like macho, um, ve yeah, sort of hyper, hyper masculine genres. And what if what was driving the main character wasn't like revenge or like yeah. corruption or like taking down the sheriff or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it was actually repression and just feeling uh, unaccepted by your surroundings. Yeah. So it, was like, it was like a modern day. Um, Western from from that perspective, and I I mean I don't I mean well there's the, I don't know if there's any other film out there that is a Western that follows centers around a, a gay character as well. Was that something you, you just kind of wanted to explore because you haven't really seen that hasn't been done before? Uh, yes, yeah, definitely. Um, I d to me that felt kind of like a, a fresh uh, concept um, uh, to explore, and uh, kind of following like the the tropes that you find in westerns like mm. there's a shootout there's yeah. there's usually a death there's um you know they, they go on the run so that that action segment was like okay let's let's do our version of this right um and and instead of uh the death just being like part of a part of a body count in a film mm -hmm. it was actually something that was a re really um core part of Jesse's life and, yeah. and that was the sacrifice he had to make to to get to a big city and we'll get on to the um the acting performances because you had some brilliant acting performances like quite phenomenal but like I think like as well I mean we're both from both from a place where the westerns have not been part of our um uh, sort of like film history was it always been something quite fascinating for you for westerns and did you how did you feel about tackling something that's like very very American um so I I, I love uh, some revisionist westerns, mm -hmm. um, the uh, assassination of Jesse James, yes. and obviously Brokeback is is, yep. is a huge um, a huge part of that genre yes. now for for gay people for LGBT. Yeah. Um, but in terms of like like Clint Eastwood films, like I don't I don't really care. Yeah. Um, sorry, Clint. <laughs> sorry, Clint. <laughs> um, but uh, Luke, um, who I I co-wrote with and kind of worked out the idea. He loves those kind of films, mm -hmm. so I thought it'd be interesting to have my sensibility, which is definitely more like the, the like indie drama side mm -hmm. of the film, and then his sensibility, which is more like that like film buff, mm -hmm. like loves The Godfather, loves westerns, mm -hmm. all those kind of films, and try to mix those two together and, mm -hmm. and um, see what happens. No, oh, you did a great job. Now, what is it? What is it like? Like, obviously, you got a great team around you working together. But what is it actually like? Like co-writing a film together. How does that actually work, or how did that work for you? Um, it was basically I I came up with a story and then I pitched it to him, mm -hmm. and then he would. He ended up being more like a story editor mm -hmm. as well as uh, rewriting one of the scenes or writing one of the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, so I would pitch the story to him, and then he would tell me like what what are the flaws in it or what doesn't quite ring true or what, mm -hmm. what doesn't quite come back around and, and work um 
so we we met a couple times workshopped it and then i would write the core of the script and then i'd send it to him mm -hmm. there'd be a couple blanks where i'm like i'm gonna leave this to you because i don't know i don't know what to do here and this i'm not sure of this i'm pretty happy with um but please uh, everything's malleable at this point so please yeah. chime in and and it would just be like a, a round of emails basically yeah. he would write a version then of a scene and then he'd send it back and then i'd send something back to him because you've got to understand know each other and get the kind of same make sure it continues to be the sort of same feel but um well it certainly worked anyway um now i felt like you had like this like huge budget because you just had these incredible locations um and i was like wow we really are in, in, in the western and not to mention just that but I mean, you also had some epic scenes as well, which I'm sure is not the most easiest thing to film at independent level. Um, tell us a bit more about the, how you found your locations. <coughs> um, so the, the North California locations, mm -hmm. which is where the first, everything up until the LA scenes mm -hmm. was shot on location in North California um, in Santa Cruz County and Monterey County. Mm -hmm. I, when I first moved to California, I lived in Santa Cruz for three months. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got to really know the place well. Um, I had some photography gigs that took me all around the coastline mm -hmm. and all around that area. So I, I just knew it well. And I, and I knew that I wanted to make something there because it has a special quality of light. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's th beautiful. The weather and it's very moody mm. um, that you don't really get in LA. Unless, yeah. You know, unless it, you're lucky. Yeah. Um, so I knew I wanted to shoot there. And finding the locations was just good old-fashioned driving around mm -hmm. um accidentally breaking into private property and As being yeah being uh, chased off by g at gunpoint um yeah. which did happen twice so i mean you know you were you risked your life for this film and and also um like uh setting up because i because i don't know what the luck of it would end up being so like um, setting up like sunrises or sunsets mm -hmm. just to see what the light was going to look like at that time of day. Mm -hmm. So a, a lot of driving around. Um, now, yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the, two, the two brothers were just, I mean, you know, putting fantastic performances. How was the casting process for you? So Alex Feldman, who played Jesse, the, yeah. the repressed um, older brother, he I already knew through a production company that I worked for when I first mm -hmm. moved to LA. So. I kind of had him in mind just because he is he's very experienced. He's he's uh, done a lot of uh, very good. Uh, been been in a bunch of great TV shows. Mm -hmm. He was he was just in the Americans um, oh, wow. <coughs> for their final season. So I and I knew that he had it in him. I hadn't seen him do a role quite like this, but I'd seen him do mm. aspects of it. So I knew that it would work with him. And then for the younger brother, it was just open casting on. Um, I think it's called backstage.com. Oh, cool. Is that what it, yeah. it works. Yeah. It works. It's it, good. It does work. You get a lot of um, Interesting shockers. Ones. Yeah, you get yeah, a lot yeah. of shockers in. But um, he was one of the ones that stood out immediately. Mm. And then uh, had a couple meetings between the two brothers to see if they had chemistry. Um, they ended up getting on really, really well mm. and had a very natural dynamic. Um, yeah, so you can it certainly tell. Yeah, it yeah. just worked out. They also looked um, yeah. like brothers. They looked yeah. similar. Yeah, I had to look at the credits, like, are these actually brothers? Like, it's yeah. really, they really look similar, which is a great credit to you for finding the talent, but then also obviously finding the believable being being brothers. Um, now, I, I just say, like, you, can, you can really tell that you've given the time to pick the perfect time for a sunset or pick the perfect time to drive through a car. What was the biggest challenge that you had? Because, I mean, you really made it look very easy, but <coughs> what was there, was there any challenges apart from, well, um, the physical sense of nearly getting shot trying to find a location? Yeah, um, I'd say getting the budget together. Yeah. Um, where I first estimated at twenty thousand, uh -huh. and th that's how much it cost. Yeah. Um, so fun oh, so you estimated fundraising. It. Yeah. We yeah. So we, we didn't yeah. estimate. Then it ended up going over, and yeah. then we cut some scenes, so it went back under. Uh -huh. um, it would have been twenty five thousand if we'd kept the scenes. Yeah. But. It came in at 20,000. Um, some of that was my own money that I'd saved. Yeah. And then uh, the rest of it was um, fundraising. Yeah. Family, friends, um, through Indiegogo, like reaching out to, to different people. Mm -hmm. um, we got a grant for it as well. Oh, great. Um, and apart from that, just logistics, getting permits to shoot yeah. in different places. Yeah. Um, we, I can probably say, like, we did shoot illegally yeah. a, at a couple of times. 
just because when you the permit process can take really long especially for parts of the country that are way outside of like a film industry so yeah these industrial towns don't have anything set up for that yeah. it would take a couple months there are also conservation areas um so it, it just would have taken too long and it works at diff a different pace doesn't it it's not like la where this you can turn around yeah and they're so, quickly. Used, to yeah, it's so yeah. used to it as well but, but i was determined to shoot up there so yeah. i we just did what we had to do well i love in terms of fundraising you literally did a bit of everything like from you know saving money to indiegogo to you know grants i mean that's that's kind of like what everybody hopes to have but you obviously had perseverance to make it and i'm so glad that you did what's it like to have your i mean obviously this film you know centers around like you know the fact that we had it was our lgbtq um, plus program which is great and obviously comes around this this character and then it's your second film you've been part of um for new filmmakers la what was it like at new filmmakers la last night you have a good time um, I, I, I had a great time. It's yeah. it's really rewarding. Um, when I when we made the film, I, I I didn't know what would come of it, but I honestly once I started submitting, I was like, I'm just be happy to get into into one, mm -hmm. and um, to get into somewhere like New Filmmakers is just nice because you you guys bring a, a huge amount of crowds, so what you really want for your film is to get eyeballs on it. Mm -hmm. you, you want it to be seen mm -hmm. um, so that then it can maybe have, a, have an effect on someone. Yeah. Um, and, and New Filmmakers always has, has amazing crowds. Um, it was also great seeing the other films. Mm. Um, the, the documentary that came out of mine I yeah. thought was excellent. I yeah. mean, really, really a standout. Um, so it's just, it, it's also good to see what else is out there, what other yeah. people are making. Um, stories told in so many different ways mm. um lgbtq like it doesn't just have to be coming out stories or like yeah, or like summer agreed. of love stories yeah you know um agreed. i think so that's such an important thing to say because you know i think people sort of like well, where do we go is it, and beyond coming of age beyond the, the romantic stories there's this there's this element as well which is a whole different thing because you're covering about you know families that you know maybe not able to deal with a certain thing but still in an environment where it's like you know he's an ex-convict as an example and so i think it's really fantastic you pushed those boundaries in your storytelling um what's next for you john um so i, I want to do a couple shorts mm -hmm. um i uh, i've got some photography coming up mm -hmm. um i'm also a photographer and uh i'm also started writing a feature script that i've been thinking about for about six seven years mm -hmm. um and and i i finally feel in a place with self-confident enough to to putting it out there mm -hmm. so um so yeah fantastic well Junie, we love your films and love your creative vision of course we'll be seeing uh, many more of them soon but uh, congratulations on real lemons and uh and we'll, we'll be back here shortly yes yeah. yeah yeah thank you thank you for having me yeah um, julian everybody you.